All right, hey, let's try this again, shall we? Huh, I grabbed the phone to head over here and I hit live and it was a disaster from there because I had to redo everything to get going live again. So anyway, here we are. I need to take a deep breath. It is insane here. It is absolutely insane. For those of you that are new to Treyer Wilderness, my name is Tammy Treyer. My family and I have been living off-grid for the last decade. We just sold our off-grid homestead that we built from the ground up a decade ago. And we are in the process of moving out of here, doing some renovations here, and building a new home on a new place. And it's a cluster. It is an absolute cluster. But we enjoy what we do. We feel very led to share our faith, share our knowledge, and to educate people on preparedness, off-grid living, homesteading, wilderness survival, autism, a little bit of everything. So welcome everybody. Um, I need to like kind of bring myself back down here. I have been, I've already put in eight hours. It's only 1030 here in northern Idaho. But uh, that's the kind of days we're having, and that's the kind of pace we're running, and that's how early we're getting up to beat the heat. Good morning, Miss Tammy. Good afternoon, Miss Courtney. Is it afternoon? Oh, don't do that to me, girl. I'm like, wait a minute. It's only 1030. But you, it's 1130, I guess, where you are. So anyway, let me real quickly share this live video on our Facebook page so others can join in. Um, for those of you that are joining in that are not regulars, please share where you're from and um, the different things you've got going on in, in your neck of the woods. And uh, also those of you that are on the replay, please don't hesitate to chime in and chat and share information where you feel led to because we love hearing from you. We have an amazing community of awesome people here and um, great prayer warriors too, might I add. Uh, good morning, Miss Shelley and Courtney. I am glad things went well for you um, with your MRI. So, been praying for you. Let me get this out here and share this. And then I will share with you all that we've got going on. It has been an absolute wild and wooly and crazy ride, and it has only begun. There we go. Okay. All right, so Facebook knows they can join in if they like. We had two earthquakes off the coast this morning, one by Alaska and one off our coast. Wow, was it a real, were they real bad ones? And was there any uh, devastation as a result of that? That's crazy. There is so much craziness going on in our world right now. It is just mind boggling. And, and then to add natural disasters on top of that, Courtney says, thank you. We'll let you know, all know what the results are. Awesome. I know God's got you cradled, so it'll be good. And, and Shelly, I am glad you could join. I know you couldn't jump in last week, so I am glad you are here today. And I know that many of you will be able to chime in and relate to some of the topics we're going to talk about today. I thought it was worthy of sharing um, how we are keeping all this together and keeping the boat moving forward and not forgetting things and working ahead to make sure that things are ready when we get to that point. Um, it's not an easy task and it doesn't come naturally to everybody. That is not a high point for the mountain man at all. As a matter of fact, when I'm working ahead, knowing that I have to work ahead to keep us going, it stresses him out because he's already, he's, he's working hard where he's at. So what is awesome for us is that where he stops, I pick up. So, I mean, it's mind boggling watching how his mind works and how he knows how to do things. If you guys could have seen how we got our container in place on Thursday of last week and how fast it was a, it's a 40 foot storage cargo con container that we moved with trees underneath it, trees that we had felled and limbed and used as rollers and um, it 
wasn't able to be backed into place. It was dropped in our lane and we had to pull it up our driveway and get it in place. And he has got such an insanely incredible mechanical mind to see how things work and the best ways to do things in a really um, archaic way. It's just really <laughs> caveman way at times. It's really awesome. Levers, pulleys, you know, his, that is his mind. And then to enhance that with the modern day tools and how he fabricates things, it's just awesome. So he is the mastermind. I am the scheduler planner for SEER. And together, uh, we both have the same drive, so it's kind of deadly. I think Austin's probably really anxious to get to school just to get out of the chaos. And not bad chaos, we work well together. It's just that we, our feet hit the floor in the morning, and when we lay flat at the end of the day, all you hear is this, like, release of air and major groaning, because we are so sore and so tired, and then it, snores i mean we're out it's just been it's been insane it's been insane and then add getting austin together and packed and prepared and ready for school and all his books and food and it's been pretty it's been pretty wild guys it's been pretty wild i would like to say i could use great prayers right now um because the pace and the deadlines and the timing of everything is really uh essential and um the thing is, I'm trusting God for every aspect of it. I just go day to day and focus on what I need to get done for the day, and focus on what I need to prepare for ahead. Um, I see some of you commenting. Shelly says, not that I know of, but they are getting too close for comfort. Comfort. I have been storing all my foods in glass mason jars. I am in the process of changing my, to Mylar bags just ordered today. I guess so. Yeah, well, see, I use, I use all jars too. Not all jars. Um, I also use buckets. But, um, yeah, I see what you're saying. Because when we had the earthquake here earlier this year, um, it was a hefty one, and, and my jars were clanging together. So, yeah, and with you being on the island, uh, you know, earthquakes cause tsunamis and all that other good stuff. So, yeah, pretty scary stuff. I'm glad everything's okay, and I'm glad there wasn't any damage. Um, Shelly says, I'm reading Millie Copper's books on the third and so hard to put down. I told you those books are phenomenal. I just, I, t week or two ago, I had finished her most recent one that hasn't hit the shelves yet. And, uh, that you will want to get your hands on also. Her books are fabulous. And how about it, Shelly? Does it not make you, you know, we already live an extremely preparedness lifestyle and I know you do as well. But her books really um, cause additional thinking and thought process and, and oftentimes things you may not have thought of for new beginning uh, preppers and preparedness minded people. So I love the way her books continue to fuel that fire and for somebody new stepping into preparedness or homesteading or any of that, it really gives you all that food for thought. Yep, make sure you rethink your plans. Exactly, Shelly. And um, they are they are so well written. And when you're done, you're disappointed because the new one's not available yet. However, if you're just starting out, she's already on on book five. Uh, she's she's my hero. I don't know how the heck she's doing it all, but that's fantastic. So yes, and if you are new to Millie Copper, she is a dear friend of mine from Wyoming, and her book uh, have her series Havoc in Wyoming. Um, can be found by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Millie Copper and also by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Millie Copper Audio because I know her first book is on audio and I know she's in the process of getting the others out on um, audiobook as well, which is awesome. So when you're out in the garden and doing your stuff, you can listen to these. Um, really, uh, you, will, you really want to get your hands on these books. Uh, Courtney says, we'll watch later on my computer. I'm staying with friends, grandma. Have a good day. Hugs. Love to you all. Love you too, girlfriend. I'm, I'm glad you are able to do that. That's a really kind-hearted thing that you're doing, and I'm glad you have that work. So enjoy your day, and we are praying for you, girl. So with all that being said, um, 
Shelly says, I love how they are written from different points of view and then continue to further the story. Exactly. Wait, it just continues to do that in, in unique ways. And, and then she also has another book available, which is a takeoff of the Havoc in Wyoming series. Also, her mind blows me away. She's got a very creative, imaginative mind. And to be able to put this all together, that's, that's just awesome. So yes, you, you definitely want to get your hands on her books. Um, she is a, a writing machine this year, and I want to just encourage you to pick them up because of the ability to really get you thinking about things and rethinking things. Because right now, guys, I cannot express it enough how important it is to not become complacent and to be really paying attention to what is going on and not just in your immediate surroundings. There is so much crap going on all over the world right now that is going to have bearing and uh, affect things. Hey, good morning, Robin. Um, we need to be focusing on our preparedness aspects of things. We are we are really focusing ahead. I'm going to share with you all that we did since Thursday and, and share with you how God is really putting it on our hearts to do things that we were putting off um, because of timing and everything. Shelly says, if you have Kindle book and the, and the Kindle Unlimited is free for a month and you can get them all there. Yep, exactly. So definitely get on there and, and check out those links. The links are below too, um, if you missed me mentioning those, but Millie Copper's books are linked down below. Thursday, just as an example from Thursday on. Okay, Thursday we got our container. Got the container in place and the fellow that dropped it left about, I don't know, 5.30. We had a run to town, half hour, half hour back, half an hour in there, got back, ate something quick. And the fellow said before he left, are you guys going to put this still in place tonight yet? And we're like, uh, yeah, because we needed that in place. That is our saving grace to get all of our stuff out of here, all of our stuff out of the shed that we have. So came back, ate got up there, got that storage container in place. I had already picked up paint, had the paint to paint it with kills just in case there were toxins in there. Also, the white paint will brighten things up for our workspaces in these containers and, and uh, got it in there. Woke up Saturday morning and started uh, getting good topsoil. We are surrounded and in, in a heavy, heavy clay area. I could dig a foot down and get blocks of clay to do pottery, which I intend to do in the future. But it doesn't work well for growing things and septic systems and all that other good jazz out here. So to our benefit, they've been logging the area, have mounds of stuff that has been decaying for years. So we were able to, with the backhoe, get good soil. I have these potatoes that I've gotten some canned, but I just keep getting pulled away. We've got them sprouting. I want to get them in the ground. I want to get potatoes growing. Potatoes are something I can leave in the ground. Same with beets and carrots. So we created a very decent sized space to grow our potatoes and um, kept going. Saturday night, he started painting the containers and it took much longer than he had anticipated. So one o'clock, he comes in after painting. I was working on the Mountain Boys website till that point. Sunday, we got to go meet Elizabeth and her family. Now, for those of you that have been joining us for a while, Elizabeth, two years ago, contacted us while we were in our major financial quandary, had our house for sale, didn't know what was gonna happen, potential of losing the house, having no place to go. And also just the fact of selling the house and not knowing where to go. Her, she and her family offered us their 150-acre off-grid ranch in northern, further north Idaho. And what a gift of peace that was. I mean, cry, oh my gosh. And beautiful place. Pictures uh, were amazing and made me cry alone. Then to see it in person on Sunday was just incredible. But to meet them was a, such a joy. The mountain man did not make it. He was he hit a wall, slept all day, which was fabulous. Um, and the thing is, at one o'clock when he finished, because of the dew, 
the t last 10 feet of the container was moist and the oil-based paint would stick. So he had like 10 more feet to go to finish the container. It was, it was, it was I felt for him. He worked very hard. But anyway, he slept all day Sunday. Austin and I did a road trip and met Elizabeth and her family. And what a joy, what a blessing, what amazing people, what an amazing paradise. And uh, definitely a place where God is resting. It was awesome. Monday comes around and he finishes painting early morning. And we start loading up the shed, pick up truck loads at a time and started loading up that container. About two o'clock, we got our delivery of materials, praising God for that. That gives me great comfort to know that my roof is sitting up there waiting for us to put it on the house. So I have all my materials here. That if anything were to happen, our materials are here. We just need to mill the logs, get the logs on and put the roof on. So that is a huge, huge blessing. And also to have paid for that, it's taken care of. That gives me great peace. So that's all taken care of. We still have the backhoe out at the gate waiting to be picked up. So he went and early morning got more soil. He also got, uh, this is, okay. I'll, remind me to jump back to the spring if I forget to mention it. He also dug um, our place for our greenhouse. And I say dug our place because we want to do partial underground greenhouse so it will hold some more of the heat from the ground and have a better temperature inside won't need as much heat from outside sources and um, a really great way to do things so he dug that into the bank we are ready to go with that now the spring you guys some of you may know that we've been praying over the property for a spring to show itself there is no spring currently there was no spring currently there is an area down below the garden in the greenhouse that would make a great area for a pond and a great form of irrigation uh, for animals and fields and so forth if we wanted to really expand things here. I was down there the other day praying over the spot. I stuck a stick in a crack in the ground because it's that dry now that things are just, the ground's cracking. Stuck a stick in there. Well, he saw my stick. So he dug uh, a hole down there preparing for our spring house. That is how much we are trusting God for our spring. However, I've been praying to God that it is his will where he places this spring, but this is where we were thinking, you know, may your will be done. <laughs> I did a video this morning on my walk with the mountain boy. Everything is dry. Where there is moisture right now, it has never been wet in the 10 years we are here. Funny story, funny thing is, it is in our road, right at the base of our driveway, basically, which would be a very strategic place in regard to placement of everything. It's right below our house, so God's preparing for us to not have to lug buckets, uh, or in the mountain man's mind, I don't even foresee that happening, that we will have some form of means of getting water into the house. Um, it would be uphill in this case, but he's an, he's an amazing mastermind. But it's right by the house. So our spring house would be able to go at the base of our driveway, which would still have a loop around it, it's right at a place that grades downhill, right into uh, where we wanted to put the pond, right above the garden and the greenhouse, which would enable us to uh, do, uh, oh, just left me, but uh, gravity feed into the garden and to the greenhouse, and also down into the pond area. So it's really crazy, but that part of the road is always dry, like dusty dry, like the clay turns to like foot deep dust and cracks in the ground and there is water starting to bubble up. So now I'm praying that the water holds off till after Saturday when we get our next container and then it can just burst through the ground. But I remind you guys, the power of prayer and the power of God in our lives. When we ask, he will provide and may not always match what we are asking directly, but he will provide what we need and he will provide it in his timing. Don't forget that. So that was Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday. It's a blur. Um, 
Yesterday, I worked on the website with the mountain boy all day long. Mountain man is uh, putting in a bathroom for a neighbor in the midst of all this, but that's fine because we still need to get stuff out of here. We can't do anything more in here until stuff is out. I am gonna finish this live. We are gonna pick up solar batteries <sighs> later, right after this. And then I'm gonna start moving stuff out of the house up into the container while he finishes the bathroom. And then this will be ready to go. Our concrete and the water's up there ready to go uh, to get our posts in. Um, so within the next week or two, we will be starting to construct things up there. I know what the other thing was on over the weekend that we did. He finished his trailer that he was building, um, welding it together, putting it together, fabricating it from an old horse trailer using parts and pieces and putting it all together. We milled lumber Saturday morning or Thursday morning. I'm so confused anymore. But we, we milled the lumber for the, for the decking on the, uh, trailer and now our mill is sitting on that trailer it is up at the new property it is leveled out and he was just tickled at how easily it leveled out because we got boat jacks to put on the trailer there's eight of them they're each 2,000 pounds so that it will stabilize that trailer hold that trailer very efficiently and level it very quickly and efficiently and we can mill our logs on that decking so God is good. Everything is just coming into place, but this is all we're doing, and this is our days. It's insanity, and um, while we had the backhoe, we were moving heavy items back and forth, getting things in place, so it's really coming around. The big thing now is getting the things out of here into the storage container. The second storage container is going to come. That will be his workshop, which, again, is going to need to be painted. He's building shelving in there all over through the inside of that so that he can organize his tools and then everything in the front of the container will be on caster so he can move his shop around dependent on the size of things that he's working on so it is quite fabulous and awesome mine will be part shop for me but right now there's no way that that's even going to be an option right now it's just going to be heaped to the gills and filled to the gills and stuff shoved in there because Things will come out of there and into the house then, and then I can worry about getting my shop in place for my leather work and my painting and all the different things I tend to do in there, jewelry. So that's what we've been doing, and it's been really wild and really crazy, but God is giving us the strength. I am praising God. Um, my muscles are toning. My body is toning. Um, it's getting very strong again, which is awesome. I have been doing things that I have not done in a long time. Um, when we were getting that container in, I was hawking those logs. They were trees, you know, like 14 foot logs that I was moving back and forth to get underneath the trail, uh, the container so that it would continue to roll as we were moving things. So I was very sore the day after that for the next two days. And uh, we had been moving um, railroad ties a couple days before that, getting that all leveled out up there for the containers. So um, I've been doing a lot of lifting and I am still passing silicone, but I am strengthening and I'm not getting sick like I was as I go through this process. And then when I do, it's not near as lengthy. I don't have time to be sick. And with the heat we've been experiencing, it's been 100 degree days here, so it's hot. So our game plan is to work early mornings break, eat, nap, work evenings in the coolness rather than being in that direct sun because there's no shade up there. So that is what we've been up to. So I ask you guys, what have you been up to? Because I know many of you are busy. Um, Miss Deb in OMAC is busy in her garden. She was busy doing garlic. She's a bit, uh, all over the place with her homestead. Kelly is deep in her garden, getting things processed and dehydrated and canned. And uh, Tammy's doing the same thing. And it's a busy time of year for us all. But when you have big projects like this and you're not efficient and you're not familiar and it doesn't come easy to you as to how you should be keeping up with things. How far ahead do you have to order materials? And, you know, and the next thing for me is going to be to um, order a bobcat with a two-foot auger on it to dig our holes so that we can get our um, concrete in. So 
organizing all the equipment to make sure the equipment is here before we need it or right when we need it you know that kind of thing it can be really difficult and the other thing is this is a busy time of year other people are building so getting equipment sometimes can be difficult so you know like i said i do aggravate him at times i just it's and and he's not mad at me it's just that it overwhelms him to think about all that but i've got to try to figure out when he's thinking he's going to get to that point so i can make sure that i have the equipment there because there's nothing worse than having three days set out or two days set out to do concrete and you can't because you don't have the equipment and there's two days shot and we don't have two days to waste right now because we've got to get under roof our first year here the snow started to fly in september i got to get i got to keep things moving so rather than allowing it to get you off flustered and um discouraged and overwhelmed you've got to try to organize yourself i have a link in the description below for a monthly weekly planner i think is what it is um it's listed there along with evernote uh it's right in front of me here evernote uh as well as workflowy and there is a calendar app if you work better with apps. I was using Nozbe before. That link is in there too, N-O-Z-B-E. And all of these, you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash workflowy, treyerwilderness.com slash Evernote, treyerwilderness.com slash Nozbe, and treyerwilderness.com slash monthly weekly planner. I needed things in and on paper this year. I just had to, and I'll show you why. Okay, so to give you a good idea, this is, this is what my week looks like. It's insane, and I am just barely started with my week. This is what the last couple weeks have looked like. I mean, it's just insane, and to have it in writing that you can look at it and see it and also carry this with keep it on the table whatever but keep jotting things down the nice thing is this also has your month at a glance so you can be planning things out i mean i'm already working into august with this build and with things so when you have a calendar with both it's very very helpful because i would run out of space on these days to write all the to do's down and i don't want other pieces of little pieces of paper notice there's nothing falling out of here i don't want little scraps of paper because little scraps of paper get lost and easily displaced and therefore that list is gone if i don't have it written in here it's out of here because once it's out of here and onto this i can't waste space in my head because there's too much going on too fast right now so it gets written in here as soon as i think about it i write it in here the other thing i do is every morning i review this every night before i go to bed i dump my brain i just let everything that's in there that i'm thinking about that needs to be recorded recorded on the days that i need to do them and i have a little system green things that are written on here are when bills are due i do that so that it stands out boldly um the other thing is i i put circles around certain dates and hearts around certain dates so i have like a little methodology of keeping track of things to show you what else i do is i put asterisks next to things and i put check marks the asterisks mean they have not been done they didn't make it that day or they need expanded upon therefore when i look back over my calendar in the morning i look at the day before to see what needs to be done and i go back and then i check mark over those things that had asterisks on them so that nothing gets forgotten everything has to have a check mark on it and and then it hits a point where the week's over and there's still a couple asterisks on here then i take them and i move them and i put a line through them on that week that they didn't get done and move them to the next week so that they don't get forgotten but having a method to the madness is key having all your numbers for your contractors or your gardeners or whatever kind of project you're working on but having the numbers i have them i have all my phone contacts 
either in Evernote or on my phone in the contacts. So if I can't find it in one place, I know for certain it's in another. If it's, if it's not in my contacts, it's because that person has pricing and different listing things that I need to keep track of. So I know how much it costs for a bobcat. I know how much it costs for the two foot auger. I know how much it costs to rent the trailer, whatever. But I have that recorded in Evernote. So I don't have to look it up. I don't have to call and ask again if I don't remember from year to year. And I know it's gonna be pretty close. That's why I use Evernote. And I use my date book. These two are my essentials. I used to use Nosebe very heavily. If I have something that I need a reminder on on my phone, I will use Nosebe. Now, Workflowy is a program that you can check mark things off very easily. So no, uh, Workflow is what I use for a to-do list that is rapidly got to change and that I don't want to go back to. Like that it's got, I got a list of things that have all have to get done to move from here, all things that need to get done to, to build the house. And I check that when I'm checking this and just make sure that that list, everything's crossed off. Nothing from that list needs to make it onto here so that nothing is forgotten. So I have my master list. I also do the grocery shopping and our food pantry out of Workflowy and Evernote. Um, but when I'm shopping Workflowy, you just swipe your finger and that one's crossed off. So as I'm shopping, I'm just crossing off my list. I'm not worrying about where did I put my paper, it's on my phone. You know, so you gotta figure out what works for you. But those are the apps and this is the box. The calendar Bible that I utilize on a daily basis, and I'm very grateful for this. This is set up well. It's, it's got a note section in the back. So if you're all paper, you don't need Evernote. You can write it all in here. The reason I like to use Evernote for certain things is because if it's something I need to re reference later, I certainly don't want to be flipping through a calendar trying to find it and figure that out. If it's something that I've got to recurrently go to and, and look things up, for example, oil changing on the vehicles, you need your filter, your fuel filter, your type of oil, your tire size, um, your insurance number, your VIN number, whatever. That's all in Evernote, on a note. I don't ever have to go take a picture of the tire for the numbers on it. I just go into Evernote. Make life easier for yourself. Make life enjoyable so that you can enjoy the important stuff in life and not have to worry about the scrappy stuff that takes our, steals our time away. So that's how I do things. That's how I keep up with things. Timeline is I know approximately how long it takes him to do things. I also know that there are certain things that he can get really anal with because he is very meticulous and that is a good thing. Everything looks beautiful that he does. But I know when it comes to certain aspects of building and projects that he might say it's gonna take a week and I know darn right well, we're probably looking at a week and a half, two weeks. So I, I work with that and I base my timing on that but keep an eye on where we're at in the project so when you learn to work together really well and flawlessly um, and you're still gonna have stuff stuff just doesn't go right but I will say this God is so good you know we have been working um, tirelessly since Good Friday because as soon as as we sold we started working on stuff and um, you know, it was a little more lax in the beginning, but now we're push, push, push. And we're doing a lot. It's grueling. It's tiring. It's really hot and hard in the heat right now. But you know what? Everything is going really, really smooth. I didn't tell you guys how we got that container in place. He pulled it back so it was hanging out over where we were going to put it. He put a um, tree under it this way, and then he put a tree under it this way. So it had a pivot point. And he grabbed the back of the trailer and their container and lifted it up and just swung it over and set it down. He was two inches too far toward the back. So he came front, pulled it to two inches, got it exactly where it needed to be, lifted it up. I pulled the trees out. We sat it down and that was that. It was like right on the line. It was perfect. Because I couldn't imagine in my mind how we were going to drag this big container, this heavy, heavy container in the stones and, and be able to place it with just a backhoe um, and not destroy 
the railroad ties that we put in place and had level and had at the perfect spot, how are we not going to you know, disrupt all that we've done? It was amazing. So it's just a perfect example of how smoothly God is helping things go for us as well as that uh, sawmill. It's just amazing. Very amazing. So, you know, when you put your trust in God, you keep praying for strength. You're praying for his guidance. You're praying for him to direct your days. Because when you have to-do lists like this, I don't do this on my own. I get up in the morning, I pray over this, and I'm like, God, direct me. Because right now, my potatoes need to wait. My boy's more important. I got to get him packed up for school. I got to make sure he's prepared. I got to make sure he understands how to use the programs on his computer, how to use his calendar. He's getting training today, too, on that. So, you know, we got to prioritize. We can't panic when things don't get done in here because we are human and God's timing is going to be better than ours. So we do what he guides us to do, do what we feel directed to do, get done what we can in a day. It's in pencil, move it to the next day. You know, it's not the end of the world. And, and when we're in a, a situation like this where there's so much to do and I got to get a roof on my house before the snow flies, I can't panic and get all um, overwhelmed by it either. I got to trust that God is going to help us every day to get done what needs to get done. And what didn't get done will get done the next day. He will continue to help us in this process. He didn't bring us this far to fail, okay? And he's not gonna do the same for you. He's, he's going to get you where you need to be. So don't allow overwhelm to step in because that's, that's the enemy. That is clearly the enemy. I'd like to ask that you pray for the mountain boy. He was getting a little overwhelmed on Monday. We had a really good road trip on Sunday. He was worried about his car, which I think we've gotten resolved. And we will find that out later today or tomorrow. And I could see him getting worried about his car. Monday, he was really overwhelmed and was concerned that, you know, things would fall apart like they did for, in Job Corps. And I said, you know what, if they fall apart, it's because God's gonna f fall you into what is ahead. He's going to take you to what he has planned moving forward. So you can't focus on things not working the way we want them to. You just have to go into it knowing that he's got you, he's brought you this far, he's gonna take you where you need to go, he's gonna open the doors he needs to open for you, he's gonna close the ones you don't need. And you just need to realize that when you start doubting and questioning and feeling all the negativity, that that is the enemy just shaking the ground under you. And you need to just tell him to go pound sand and jump him back on top of him and tell him to go back where he belongs. How many of you experience that when you're working on these big projects and you're working on stuff? How many of you experience, you know, the enemy trying to rattle your chain and, and rattle you to the core? Shelly says, I've been sorting through things and trying to find homes or get rid of. We had a leak and some of our floor needs to be replaced. This is the weekend's project. Awesome. And it feels so good getting that stuff done. I have to tell you guys, we've been moving stuff into that shed and it is just, it's not even overwhelming to me. It's disturbing to me. As I told you, I've kept a lot of things not knowing how or if they may be utilized on this new house, in our shops and so forth. Um, we have guest cabins that will be built later on. You know, so I've got lots of linens. I don't wanna give them away now because that will be the linens we will utilize to furnish the guest cabins. And you know, right now I had pulled some stuff out for Austin to take to school with him. So, you know, that was just an example. But we've got a lot of things that will then be gone through and downsized after this. Because if I don't have a use for it now, I won't. So it's disturbing and overwhelming to move stuff that you're not sure you want or don't want. Because I don't want to take up my space with useless things. But at the same time, I don't want to be spending money later because I gave something away. So it's just a waiting game, and that's something that I need to just handle. And, but I will be celebrating when I can completely empty out that container and have very little in there. Shelly says, I have so much stuff, and I know I need to get rid of some stuff, but which one? The house is not done, and I'm not sure what I might need. Exactly. I know, right? And it's just, it's like, ah, oh. Because, like, I got a lot of kitchen stuff up there. 
I will actually have cabinetry in my new home. So, and things will be organized differently. The intention is to keep the house very simple, keep the backup and extra things in the storage container. So my house is very comfortable and very simplified. And you know, the, there's stuff like for the kitchen that I know I'm not gonna want or keep, but I need to be sure what I need to keep and what I don't need to keep. If you have guest cabins, will you need extra for them? Yeah, exactly, I will. And like some of the stuff from the house may go into the guest cabin. Right now we bought a uh, love seat that's up in my she cave um, that is a opens up into a sleeper sofa. We are putting that in our living room in the new house so that if someone comes, Austin comes home, he has a place to sleep. Then the guest cabins will be built and they'll be small, um, but they'll, they'll probably be two of them. And um, that will get moved into there and then we'll put a nice love seat recliner or something maybe in the, the new house. Um, but yes, so we'll be shuffling a lot of things and we'll be furnishing those things. So that's why I, it's like I can't get rid of this stuff now because there'll be kitchen things going into each of the guest cabins because they'll have like a small kitchen kitchenette kind of thing. Um, they will have, they'll be very tiny, nice size, but tiny, probably 12 by 12, 12 by 14s. And they'll have lofts for sleeping. Some will have that sleeper sofa because there'll be people that can't get up into the loft. And uh, a tiny bathroom with a single shower unit and a composting toilet. And it, that's that. Oh, and a little wood stove. So they will be very uh, strategically set up so that the space is used wisely. But like I said, I don't want to go getting things for those units later when I you know, had them and gave them away. So keeping these things till we are furnished and set and then donating will be key. But it'll, you know, it's a process. But it just stinks having to move it all. <laughs> so... I've really, I, I'm enjoying this process. It's exciting. My biggest struggle for me is being stuck inside. Like yesterday, it was an all day, working with Austin on the computer, helping him to do some projects on the computer, and me working on his website side by side, getting everything lined up for his trip Monday for school, making sure we have everything considered, his grocery list, our grocery list, all that stuff. But it's so nice outside, and I, I really enjoy being part of that physical labor because it really makes me feel healthy. And the other funny thing is I showed you the duct work system that the mountain man put in here when we were putting it in this house. And I end up freezing in here. I end up having like uh, flannel shirts on and uh, wool socks because I get cold in here. He comes in and he's sweating to death and dying when it's 100 degrees outside and it is, it's hot. But in here, that duct system really keeps it cool. So when you're just sitting around doing nothing, I mean, I'm, meant, I'm using my brain, but I'm not using my body physically. I get chilly in here, so it's kind of funny. So we don't even need an air conditioner, and we could run an air conditioner, we have two of them, but it stays so nice and cool in here, it's amazing. So that is how I handle our big projects. It's a lot of work, and it, 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 it makes your brain at times feel like it's going to combust. And like I shared with you last week, you know, I've got so much going on in my head that when somebody stops me and asks me a simple question like, where's the other roll of toilet paper? I stand there and go, because I have to stop everything to be able to answer that simple question. It's really ridiculous, but it's the pace we're at right now. I can't complain. Uh, we do try to take as many breaks as we can. Sunday is our day of rest. We don't do anything on Sundays and it serves us well. So there's a lot of links down below today. I kept a lot of the links from the past shows. My study Bible is in there. There's the fermenting and the uh, um, Millie's books, the Herbal Academy. There's all kinds of different informational, really useful information down below. So check that out. And um, I wanna read some things to you today kind of go on these lines. Got to find it. I think this is the one. Okay. 
So it says, please God, not people. Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. We usually think of faith in terms of getting answers to our prayers and receiving from God the things that he alone can provide. And that's okay. But there's a more important reason for building up your faith. Faith is about pleasing God. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. What pleases God? Your faith. What displeases God? Your lack of faith. In the past, Christians sometimes described praying passionately as storming the gates of heaven. It was sincere sediment, but it wasn't completely accurate. The battle isn't between you and heaven. You have a red carpet welcome to approach God at any time. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That's Hebrews 4.16. If there's a battle, it's between you and the forces of hell. And that's Ephesians 6, 12 through 18. Why are our prayers sometimes not effective? The Bible says the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So if, if we pray, but it's not backed by our faith, that's when God doesn't really have much reason to answer it. He wants us to be faithful. He wants us to trust so much in a spring that he provides it for us. And we've got to do our part. When I saw that the mountain man dug that hole, I said, did you see my stick down there? He says, yeah, that's where I dug. And I knew it because I could tell just based on where it was. Those are our acts of extreme faith in trusting God to place and, and, and to, to, uh, to meet us with our efforts and our faith. And he will. You watch. I'm going to have a spring house in the middle of my road up there. <laughs> so funny. I just think that's so funny. But anyway, we will see what happens. I, like I said, I did a short video on that this morning. I may put that live on our YouTube channel. I'm a bit behind on getting some of our videos out. So bear with us. Um, okay, so yes, God is moved by your needs, but he responds to your faith. I love that. Yes, God is moved by your needs, but he responds to your faith. You know, when we start doubting and we start getting fearful and we start questioning and we start panicking and worrying that my roof isn't going to get on my house before the snow flies, you know, that's not trusting him very much. That's not trusting him at all. And we need to live by faith. We need to live. Oh, I got to show you guys something then. I got to go grab it. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to go do that. Share with me finish reading this and then I'll go get that. Share with me how you are stepping out in faith. Um, so that is why nothing is more important than building up your faith. And how do you do that? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's Romans 10, 17. It works like this. Get into God's word, get, get God's word into you, pray, and things will begin to change for the better in your life. Okay, I'm going to go grab something here and I'll be right back. i got to spin this so I don't take out the camera. not fear. Can you see that? I love it. I'm so proud. I'm so excited of my boy. These are, and many others are going to be available. Um, the other one, there's another one that says that has on the front changing lives because his tagline for his business is educating, creating opportunities and changing lives which is what he's going to do when he opens up his Bigger Than Autism officially um, to enable other people on the autism spectrum to have a storefront of their very own on our site and enable them to be able to uh, do something successful. 
do something for themselves, be successful, and be a part of a community that's going to thrive. I'm so excited. That's his shirt. That is what he's wearing to school when he goes up there on Monday. I am so proud of him. He's got a decal for on his car, and um, he's got business cards that he's uh, putting in his thank you cards to people, and it's pretty awesome. I know it's going to go. I just need to get it done. But I want to read something else to you guys today. Um, in regard to our faith, and this is, I want to share this with you. This almost freaks me out a little bit because he's like putting back on me um, at times my own words. We're, we go for walks every morning or almost every morning. It's been a little crazy lately. But, um, you know, I expressed and shared with him what God led me to believe we should do with his website. He was all on board because he was so excited because he wants to help the autism community so much. And he also sees this as the opportunity to um, pay for his schooling. And we have stepped out greatly in that regard uh, and have stepped out so much without stairs or ladders or treads or anything underneath our feet. We are just stepping. That is how much we trust God's abilities and trust God's promises. And it's not just with our house and our day-to-day -day lives. It's with our futures as well. And so we're walking and Austin's like, yeah, well, we'll be able to pay for this and I can get this taken care of. And I'm like, I don't even have it live yet. And he looks at me and he's like, I'm like, oh my goodness, you're throwing my words right back at me, aren't you? I'm like, okay, keep going. I got it. I'm back on track. You know, I mean, he's so already at the other side of it i usually am but i'm i'm having to get this designed and there's a lot involved in setting this up so that i don't have to make further changes down the road as it grows i'm trying to think ahead of that so so anyway it's just kind of funny when you are reminded of your own verbiage but we do step out in extreme faith and we've been told we're foolish for it already and we can be thought to be foolish because as it says in here we are not here to please people we are here to please god right so people can think i'm crazy, nutty, loony, whatever they want to do. But as you continue to follow and you watch and you see what God does as we pray, as we vocalize, as we are 100% transparent with you that we are praying for a, a spring up there and it appears, you know, there's no better testimony. There's no, I, I can't make this stuff up, guys. I can't make a spring show up. I can't. I don't have that power. But God has the supernatural power to boost my prayers. So I just want to read a little bit to you out of here. This is Hebrews 11. And I love Psalms 91. It's a very deep, encouraging um, chapter. I love it. But Hebrews 11 speaks great volumes. And we need to remember this. We need to... It always blows me away when I read how the Israelites you know, walk through walls of water. Can you imagine? I mean, that'd be like going to an aquarium today. I mean, just, uh, that's just a, uh, a minute uh, example, but that you have water on both sides and you can see the sharks and all the fish swimming next to you as you walk through. But imagine how massively high that had to be and how loud that had to be. And, and the fact that you could touch it and it's wet and they're staying behind that wall of water. How can you get to the other side and doubt the, 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 the being, the father, the papa that did that for you and go on and still doubt and question his abilities and, his, and, and want to go back to slavery? It just makes me like do a face palm. It's like, you know, but that and when you really look at things and you look at our lives, we forget about stuff and we forget about, you know, we get in the heat of our panic situations and we forget what God is capable of. And that's what this is about. So it's called Faith in Action and it's Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe has formed at God's command so that what is seen 
was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from his life, from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one of who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abram, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Can you imagine just packing up everything and going and not even know where you're going, but trusting, fully trusting? By faith, he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful, who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he is as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand of the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on the earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he was prepared, has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abram, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abram seasoned in his faith that God could even raise the dead. And so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshiped as he leaned on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was, had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as a greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. I challenge you to read the rest. I'm stopping at verse 26. When we step out in faith and fully trust God, regardless what is going on around us, regardless what is going on in our lives, he will meet us. He will protect us. He will provide for our prayers and he will provide for our needs. Our family has witnessed that over and over again. And it is with great faith that we are stepping out and taking Austin to Moody Aviation. It is through great faith that we continue every day focusing on the prize ahead and, and knowing that God has great plans for us, but also listening to God's nudges. We were putting our garden and our greenhouse off because we didn't think we were capable of handling yet another challenge and another project during all of this. But we both felt the deep urge to uh, and need to get those things in place. So we took a day and spent the day going through the good soil we found to prepare for our planting and to prepare the, for the greenhouse so that when we are in our home, we can start constructing the greenhouse so that we can utilize it for winter to grow our produce and our food. 
So the thing is, as we walk out in faith, God will nudge us to do things. Some of those things may be really uncomfortable. We've stepped out so many times with nothing under our feet, totally trusting God, having people tell us that we were absolutely off our rockers and that God would never ask that of us. Yet God blessed us abundantly for our faith and not listening to what people think, but focusing on what he thinks and what he wants. And that can be a terribly hard place for people to be. It's not an easy process, but the more you do it, the more freedom you have of worrying what other people think. And the more freedom you have of knowing that you are following the will of God and doing what you are called to do. And it's a really powerful place to be. You know, waking up and being sore and tired, but knowing that God is going to give you the strength you need to get through your day. And when he says nap on a hot afternoon after you don't have any more strength left in you and you nap and wake up totally revived, it's okay. And you know what? You still manage to get everything done on the to-do list for that day. It's quite awesome. So there's lots of ways to handle your to-dos and to make sure that you get everything done when you're working on these big projects. This is key. So is this. So is that. And actually, that is the most important aspect of it. And the thing is, no matter how busy I am and no matter how incredibly intense my to-do list is for the day, my day starts here regardless what time of day it is, and it ends here. And that is the most important part of things because it is what is keeping us moving forward. It is what is fueling our fire. It's said to pull from the word and to let the word into you. And that is really, really important. He leads us to what we need to hear. He strengthens us. He brings courage back into us when we get defeated. You know, the mountain boy was defeated on Monday, Tuesday. There was no way that I was allowing that to continue happening. You know, we, we also need to help each other. That's what this is about. But in your own families, you can do the same. Pay attention to your loved ones and pay attention to the words they're speaking. You know, sometimes by their appearance and what they've got going on, they don't appear to be hurting. But there were significant things that Austin was saying to me on Monday that I started to pick up on the fact that he was in a negative place and that, that he was, you know, he was excited, but there was a part of him that was hurting. And um, as busy as we are and as fast paced as things are, that's where we also need to understand that God is guiding and nudging and we need to pause and we need to take care of the ones around us and, and then keep going. So although we are really crazy busy and leaving fiery streaks behind us, we still have to learn to take care of ourselves. We still need to learn how to be there for each other, to nurture each other. You know, as fast paced as things are, I could cancel these for the summer, but I don't want to. It refuels my fire. I, I believe that I'm helping other people out there to walk through the things that we are experiencing, whether it's big projects, whether it's the chaos of the un, our unknown future, which it is, it's unknown, but it's always unknown, right? We, we know that at some point we're going to die. That's one sure fact that we know. So allowing our current world circumstances to put us into a negative place and to scare us and and that is really unnecessary and a waste of time we just need to keep focusing forward planning reading his word communing and being there for one another and paying attention to each other's needs and also knowing when we are in those places to take our needs to god when i said about taking care of ourselves too you know, there are things we can do to take care of ourselves, to nurture our bodies. I shared with you the Copper H2O um, water vessels. These are awesome. Uh, I do this every day. This is something else that has absolutely saved me. I'm going to share about that in a second. If you're interested in these, they are antiviral, antibacterial, meaning that when you have water in here, it's not only... Um, adding copper to your water, which is an essential nutrient, it is making your water antiviral, antibacterial, which is really important right now with all the garbage going on. 
We want to be able to keep our systems as healthy as possible and as strong as possible. So that's why um, we started utilizing these. You can go to treyerwilderness.com slash copper H2O. Link is down below. The other thing is this is a amber necklace. It's completely amber all the way around. These you see advertised and utilized for babies that are teething. And it is to help reduce pain, it uh, helps reduce colic, it helps calm, it helps uh, sleep, it heals the body. It is a great, great thing. It is resin from a tree, that is what amber is. There's all different colors of amber. The colors are not significant to specific types of healing, but I encourage the use of these. I have, um, some more of these coming and I have some bracelets coming that I will show you because this right here has been keeping my lymphatic system open. How do I know that? It's a little disgusting, but I'm going to share it because some of you are following me because you also had breast implant illness. And one of the greatest struggles I have had for the last four years is that my lymphatic system clogs. And it typically, when, when your lymphatic system clogs, your lymphatic system runs th through your entire body. But mine would clog specifically on this right side and I would get such intense facial pain and head pain and the rest of my body would be terribly inflamed, like uh, seven to 10 pounds of excess fluid because my system was not getting rid of the garbage. And regardless what I did, there was a lot of different treatments I did. Deep muscle therapy was one of the greatest things that helped me and kept my system open, but I can't, I don't have access to that right now. I started using the melt method, which is something that I also encourage you guys to have on hand. And you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash melt method. Keeps your system open, keeps your, your uh, skin hydrated. Very important, uh, very simple tool to have on hand to help keep your body and all of its systems working properly. This necklace allows and keeps this draining. I wake up, when I first got this, I'd wake up in the morning and I'd almost choke to death because of all the drainage that was occurring. And I, I was instant, I instantly noticed, I'm very in tune with my body. And since I have been wearing this necklace for the last month and a half, I have not had any struggles with my lymphatic system. It's amazing. And I can feel it working. I can feel it keeping them open. This whole side and my eustachian tube have been clogged for four years. It is barely clogged. It's still a little bit, but it's, it's a lot more open. I don't have the pressure and the pain there. I sleep. Oh my gosh, I lay flat. It could just be that I'm <laughs> overworking myself, but I hit the bed and I am out. I don't move. I wake up in the morning and that's the end of that. But these have been helping the mountain man too. I got him one and um, I got the mountain boy one. They are uh, great in calming and um, soothing neck pain. My tension is in my neck and my shoulders. Since I've been wearing this, I don't have the pain when I'm sitting in front of the computer all day. So it is definitely something to check out. You can go to treyerwilderness.com slash amber, S-O-S, and um, it will direct you to their website. They have all kinds of different products, all kinds of different pieces. The trick with the amber is the more of the amber that you have touching your skin, the better. So they have single pendant necklaces that would just touch you right here. The benefit of this is that it's all the way around um, my neck and resting on my chest. So if you're looking for um, the best results, you'd want to go with something like this. If you're looking for something just more pretty but beneficial, then you could get one of the pendants. The same with the bracelet. It's not going to be as effective because it's not a solid. It just has it has a heart on it. Can you imagine? So, um, but I got that just to see if I feel any difference in my hands because one of the things that I'm dealing with is these muscles right here and my hands have been really... Um, getting overworked and utilized more than they normally have. I'm getting a lot of cramping and struggles with those muscles, so I'm trying to see if that will help there. Um, I saw some comments come across. Um, T. 
Tammy says, is that what Glenn was wearing when we met up? Yes, it was. Yeah, he had the amber on. And uh, he's not real keen on things around his neck, but he's noticing too that it is helping him. Now, the thing with the amber is you can't wear it in the shower. You shouldn't get all kinds of oils all over it. You wanna try to keep it as clean and dry as possible. Now, we've been sweating and grungy and full of dirt and dust, so I have been taking mine and wiping it down. Um, rather than wearing it in the shower because they will break down, it's resin. Um, the other thing is when it's hot and, and um, you're sweated up like that, I think that it even helps more because you're bringing more of that amber into your system. So um, it's a great way of natural healing. And the fact that my lymphatic system is open like this is tremendous. I mean, that has been my biggest, biggest struggle. And when that happens, I was down anywhere from three days to a week and a half, depending how quickly I could get it back open. But I'm learning how to do that, and I wanna share that information with you. The melt method is what I use, the balls for the hand is what I use to help keep my lymphatic system open, but it took a lot longer. This is a regular thing that just continues to keep it open. So every morning I will, you know, drain really good. And the other, the, there's been like three or four days that we've been really working hard outside and all of a sudden there was just this huge release of drainage. And I know that's gross, but at the same time, it's really awesome. My system is really detoxing and the way it is detoxing is I'm not getting tremendously sick, where before when it was detoxing, I was really, really sick. And that's because my lymphatic, although it was detoxing, it wasn't open and that stuff was not leaving my system. So very key, very, very key. Tammy said, awesome, Benjamin liked it and, and one, wants one. They're very inexpensive. And um, I've searched and searched for years trying to find somebody that makes them for adults. You m mainly find them for babies and teething and little bracelets and stuff. But I wanted a full-blown necklace. And I've got a necklace that has teak wood on it and some amber. But the amber's not even touching my skin because of the tiki wood, or teak wood beads. So it, it wasn't benefiting me. And I finally found this woman and she is a gem. She is so super nice um, and very willing to work with you. And her prices are great. These are all handcrafted. And um, I think you will really, really uh, appreciate um, making such a purchase because you will greatly benefit from it. Um, so I just wanted to share that. There's other things we have going on too. Oh, I gotta share this. I. I treated myself. Let me see if I can spin this around. And I treated my girl. See my big girl? She's laying on a fleece bed. That bed is actually made to go in a basket, but as you can see, she takes it up all on her own, okay? And, and the basket would be annihilated. But the other thing that I treated myself is, I've had the same wash basket for probably 17 or more years and it is starting now to fall apart it was a handcrafted basket and it was my wash basket well i needed something new so here is the bottom it's nice solid wood you can see leather straps this is all hand woven and and they both came from the same place and i want to share them with you they are not linked below but um it is from you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash Amish baskets. And it is a community of varying talented Amish individuals who are selling their wares on the same website. And that wash basket, I am so, I feel so tremendously blessed by it because the one I had was a little bit longer, but it was like half the height. This is so durable and, and easy to tote around. And I just, I love the look of old stuff. I love handcrafted stuff. And my girl is just treasuring her beds because she's been laying on old pillows and blankets and she's got these, her elbows and her knees, whatever on her are so calloused. And she was actually getting sores. And so I was really excited to be able to uh, find this company. And I was getting the basket and just happened to see an ad come up on the website for those. And we could use an extra large, but uh, they don't make such a thing. So that was the biggest size, but she curls up pretty good and fits on there. But if you're looking 
for handcrafted things. If you need baskets for your gardening, your foraging, your kitchen, um, they've got all different kinds and um, everything is very well constructed. So I wanted to pass that on too. Because we've been utilizing a lot of different things and um, have been able to purchase things that we needed for a long time. And um, of course we are also frugal still heavily so you know we don't want to waste our money on something that's gonna fall apart I don't shop at Walmart for stuff like this because it's just it's a waste uh, we've had other dog beds they fall apart like a month later you're stitching it already these are so heavy-duty and really really nice so I wanted to share that with you uh, we've got a bunch of other things that we will be using in our build that we've been using here on our homestead that we feel are essentials for homestead living that we will be sharing along the way too. So we consider these folks friends of Treyer Wilderness because they make quality products and there are benefits to things like this and the Copper H2O. There's reasons that we are purchasing these things. Um, we don't purchase on whims. We don't purchase just to have things. We purchase because there's a purpose behind the things we're purchasing, if that makes sense. So. Anyway, I have kept you on for forever long today. It's a long one. I knew it was going to be with the things I wanted to share, but um, give me your feedback, guys. Those of you that are watching the replay, are there topics you want to hear about? Are there questions you have about what we're doing and how we're building? I would love to be putting out like a daily progress video of what we've got going on, but there is just no way humanly possible for me to do that. And um, the reason I said about the batteries, picking up the batteries, uh, the power is out here at 7 o'clock every night. House is off because our batteries are no good and the um, new homeowner needed new batteries. So we are picking those up and getting those installed. So now I will have power into the night, but I do choose to sleep. So I need to stay healthy. So it's just, it's just not possible to get all the video footage out there, but we will be progressively doing progressive things. And um, I will be putting together like a, a video of all of our process later. Um, you can also go to Instagram and on our Trail Wilderness page there and under Off Grid Cabin, you will see uh, the highlights and I am behind on that, but I am gonna be catching up on that. That's something I can do once we have power at night. I can easily do my photo editing and get that stuff up on there. So keep following along, but if you have questions, if you have questions about you're new to homesteading, you're new to preparedness, you know, you, you um, have questions about off-grid living, please don't hesitate. If you have questions about autism or breast implant illness, please don't hesitate. That's why I spend this time and I, and I have a presence online is because we want to help others progress and now more than ever we need to be healthy, we need to be fit, and we need to be prepared. We do not, we cannot get complacent right now. They want us complacent. They want us to start feeling comfortable and forget about everything and stop paying attention. Do not. We must pay attention. So keep stocking up on things. Keep being prepared. Keep looking into the future that is unknown and, and uh, thinking of how you can prepare your family. Read Millie's books. You won't be sorry, I promise you. So I'm going to say a prayer. I've got to get back to work and working on bigger than autism.com. Oh, which reminds me, if you guys would like to stay on top of what is going on with Austin, we are, he is going to be doing a newsletter. He's going to be doing a lot of photos and uh, hopefully some videos and trying to keep up with everybody as he's up there at college. And um, you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash follow Austin and sign up for his uh, newsletter. And um, many people were asking how they could help support Austin. We share this just because people have been asking. I don't want you to feel obligated, um, but you can go to, um, just went blank. You can use his email donations at biggerthanautism.com for both PayPal and Zelle. And um, the t-shirts that I showed you are something that we've worked on so that, um, and we feel that the community that will be joining Austin on Bigger Than Autism will also like to advertise where they are and what they're doing. So that is a means for them to also have something to represent their store. Um, but those will be something that we'll also be utilizing as a form of a fundraiser to help Austin uh, pay for his living expenses, his food and his schooling. Um, but this is it's just tremendous. God is opening doors. And uh, 
There'll be more on that. Um, he has a page on biggerthanautism.com when it's live that explains all that he's got going on, the missionary aspect of what he is doing, and um, what his, his years will look like in this uh, five-year to seven-year program. So anyway, um, and thank you for those of you that have supported him. It is amazing. Um, and we just so greatly appreciate it. Uh, just, I, I'm excited. On the 31st, the Mountain Man and I are going up to go to his student orientation and to spend the weekend with him, um, helping him get acclimated, set up. He's going up on the 27th to get settled into his um, housing and uh, with the guys. And um, it'll be good. I'm just really excited. So it's all coming together and uh, we will definitely keep you in that loop. But I'm gonna say a prayer here. Papa, I just thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace, and how you meet us with our faith. And how that is your request of us is to be faithful and to trust in your word and your miracles and your promises and to keep doing our part where we can meet in the middle. But the thing is, in order to have all of that, we need a relationship. And I just pray that everyone watching this video has that amazing relationship that you offer. I couldn't imagine my day to day without it. I couldn't imagine my life without it. I just feel so tremendously blessed, even in the chaos, by your constant hand and your visible hand in everything that we do. And I wish that for everybody else. And it's right there available to them, no different than it is to me. And I know that, and that's why I'm gonna do my part to help people understand that and know that all they have to do is call on you and ask you to forgive them and embrace a life with you, seeking you and reading your word and, and following your will in their life. And I just, I pray that you wrap your loving arms around everybody present today and just give them peace and comfort and um, just be with them with their, in their challenges, be with them in their day to day, be with them in their joy and comfort and peace and May they feel your presence, see your hand, and, and know that you are there. I ask that you just keep your loving arms wrapped around Pat Kenny and just continue to heal his body. Thank you for bringing him home. Thank you for keeping him on this earth. I say that selfishly because I know that you um, also have plans for him here, but I'm thankful that he's still here. And... I just ask that you continue to heal his body, touch his body, and give him peace and happiness and joy during his healing time. May he feel your presence. Be with all those that are on our prayer list that are in need, Terry, Perry, and June, and be with Chad, and be with JC and Lori, and be with Starry, and be with Kelly and Mike and Courtney. Just continue to heal Mike and Courtney's bodies and just give them all strength. And just be with all those out there that are in need, all the silent prayers that haven't been asked. And just, we thank you for all you are going to do in each of our lives. And I just pray that everyone takes time each day, regardless how busy it is to seek you. We love you and we ask this all in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys, it has been a long one, but I hope you guys gained something from it. I hope that you're out in your gardens listening and enjoying what we've had to say here today. Um, I've been kind of rambling on on my own today, not as much interactivity, but I know you guys are busy too, so I'm glad you're listening in. And I just hope you gained something from this today because I know that we all get really crazy busy at times. Some of us more than others, some of us for longer periods of time than others. All I can say is this winter, I'm hibernating except for Wednesdays at 1030, okay? <laughs> I'm hibernating. And I think the mountain man will be joining me. Uh, we're really anxious to sit on our front porch with a cup of coffee and no worry in the world. I don't know if we'll ever hit that point, but that's what we're looking forward to. <laughs> but guys, I love you all. I thank you for joining me today. I wish you all a fabulous week and may God be with you and God bless you. Love you all.